Statistics and Excel. Confidence interval when standard deviation of population is known. Get ready and some coffee because it's time to get realistic with statistics and Excel. Here we are in Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because, apparently, we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. So, if you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, three tabs down below. Example, practice blank. Example, in essence, the answer key. The practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab, the one that we will be working on as you can see is blank we will construct this from a blank worksheet practicing our excel tools as we build it let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be building looking at confidence intervals when the standard deviation of the population is known our normal statistical situation being we want to find information about a large population but we can't test every item within the population because it's too large therefore we would like to take a sample of that population test the sample hoping we can apply the results we found from the sample to the characteristics of the larger population two methods we will typically be using one hypothesis testing two confidence intervals hypothesis testing often lending itself to situations where we think we know what that middle point is for example if we're trying to say the average amount of nuts that are going to be machine put into a bag of nuts we think we know what the middle point is we're testing it to see whether that is true or not and the question would be how far away from the middle point would the sample have to be for us to reject the original hypothesis confidence intervals lend themselves to situations where we don't know what the middle point is that's what we're trying to find so when we take our sample we take the average of the sample which is we're going to imagine being the middle point generally now you can still kind of use hypothesis testing because you could then say well if that's the middle point I'm going to imagine every other point as if it's a hypothesized mean. In other words, if I got this as the result, I would imagine what if the mean was actually over here and I drew a bell curve over here at this point, would this result be far enough away for me to reject it? And I can choose every other point to then determine that and I can make then a confidence interval, which would basically be peak to peak, right? And that would give us our interval but that's kind of tedious to do what we would like to do is say hey look if this is the result of my sample i'm going to imagine that the middle point and draw in essence our bell curve around it and then look at our confidence intervals in this format so that's what we would like to be doing now you, we might have situations where we actually know the standard deviation if we do we might still be able to use a normal distribution bell curve however if we don't know the standard deviation and possibly if the sample size is smaller that's when we might be able have to use those t distributions where we still have like a bell-shaped curve but it has fatter tails on it resulting in us needing a larger confidence interval a wider range in order to get the same level of confidence given the fact that the curves can have those wider uh, tails on it so this time we're imagining that we do know the standard deviation of the population now that's often not going to be the case because uh, if we don't know what the what the middle point is the mean is then it's likely that we might not know the standard deviation either but in some cases we might so so we'll do the standard deviation known this time and then later we'll get into situations where we don't know what the standard deviation of the actual population is all right and also just remember when we think about standard deviation we have the standard deviation of the population 
we have the standard deviation of the sample, and then we have the concept from the central limit theorem that if we imagined all combinations of samples and we took the average of all combinations of those, then we can think of the standard deviation of that, which, and that's where this formula comes into play, which is estimating that concept. All right, let's go to the practice tab. This is where we have some uh, pre-formatted cells so you can follow along with less Excel formatting and then the blank tab, the one we will be working on. Let's build this thing out. So I'm going to select the whole thing. I'm going to right click on it and I'm formatting the cells. This is my baseline formatting I like to work with. Currency, negative numbers bracketed, no decimals, getting rid of, I'm sorry, no dollar sign and no decimals. And then, okay, I like to make it bold. Home tab, font group, bold. You might not need to do that, but I do it for screen recording purposes because you have to be bold when you're when you're on the screen. Uh, might may not need to be so bold in other situations but like when you're like when you're leading things like i am leading the the discussion here you've got to you got to take charge so that's it has to be bold distribution so i'm just going to put the header up here standard deviation of pop known so that's going to be my title all right Let's make this larger. All right. So we'll make it out to maybe here so I can see. And then I'm going to make this like a header by saying home tab, font group, make that black and white. Now, if I spelled anything wrong, I apologize. I'll do a spell check maybe later. I'm not going to get into it now because we've got a lot to do here. So what is cost of average job we're going to, to imagine? That's what we're looking for. So we have jobs maybe like a contractor and they make whatever fences or decks or something. And obviously the, the cost of them change because none of them are exactly the same, but we can pick up the average. What's the average cost? So the pop mean, that's basically what we're looking for, right? The, the mean of the population. Okay, so then, uh, so we're gonna create a confidence interval, create, I'll say, confidence interval interval at 0.95 or 95 percent confidence home tab number boom so you can imagine what do we want you can imagine like our curve here middle point we're going to take our sample have the middle point which is kind of like uh the mean and then we're thinking a range around it which is going to help us give us our our confidence levels all right, so we're gonna say, of, and we want 95%. So if we're talking a bell curve, that would be around two standard deviations, you would think around the middle point because that's when 95% of the curve is under there. All right, uh, let's say that we have the standard deviation of the population. So let's say this is gonna, I'll just put it STD of the pop. So that's standard deviation of the population, population. And that's going to be, let's say, 202. And then we have the confidence level that I already said was 95%. So we said create a confidence interval. We can also call it a confidence level. Let's just repeating the same thing. All right, so there is that. I'll percentify that to recognize it. Let's. I'm just going to pull over our formulas. I won't retype in the formulas. They're going to be these two. So I'm just going to copy those. Now, if you want, I know I'm kind of cheating here. If you want to write your, if you want to write those formulas down, then you can go to the insert and you can go to the equations and you can uh, ink in your formula X, boom, and then plus or minus. And if it gets anything wrong, like you can circle it and then try to fix it. Say you want it like that or something. And so that is that. But, but this is just for reference in any case. All right, so let's make this orange because this is my, that's what I'm going to start using or have been using for my data. So this is the data or like the problem parameters. So I'll make it orange instead of blue. All right, and then I'm going to make a skinny C. Now I'm actually going to make uh, our, our population 
And so you wouldn't really have the population, but I'm going to imagine that we do have it so that we can so that we get a bigger picture. So I'm going to say let's actually create the population. So this is going to be the pop mean. I'm to do this, I'm going to be using in the data the data analysis. If you don't have this, you can turn it on. I won't go into detail on that. We've talked about it in the past, but you can uh, you can look up how to do that on the YouTubes or in ch uh, like try chat GTP probably tell you how to do that uh, too. But we have that on in Excel. And then we have the, uh, this is gonna be the STD of the P. So we're gonna say the pop mean is 822 and 203. This is gonna be the data that I'm going to use in order for Excel to generate our information. And I'm gonna make like like a lot, like 3,000. You might not need to make that long of a list, but I'm gonna make a long list to get an idea. So I'm gonna then select this, uh, home tab, format paint, put that over here. I'll make this a little thinner and I'm gonna make this red because this is something we're imagining we don't actually have, but it's the underlying data that we're drawing from. So I'm gonna go home tab, font group, let's make this red and bordered and then white, red and white, let's make it. All right, and so then I'm gonna have account and I'm gonna make like 3000 of these. So I don't wanna count it down to 3000, I could go one, two, and then select these and drag it down to 3000. But let's try a sequence formula because I have a lot, lot of numbers. So let's say sequence and then tab. And then I want uh, the rows, uh, we want to have 3000. And then columns, we just want one column, comma. And then the start number is going to be at number one. And the steps are going to be just one, two, three. So whole numbers a one. Closing that up, enter, and boom, it spills it down. If I say control shift down, down to 3000. All right, sweet. All right, now let's go ahead and put our data. This is where the data is going to go. I'm going to save this just in case Excel does something funny because I'm going to try to tell it to make a long list. Data analysis which you might have to turn on if you have it on there's our data analysis and then i'm going to make a random generation field i can't see it my eyes are going bad random number generation and then we're going to say number i'm going to put this is one number of random numbers we want 3000 random numbers i want them to not be totally uniform I want them to approximate a normal distribution. So it's gonna be random within the parameters of a normal distribution that has a mean of 822. That's gonna be like our average cost of the population and a standard deviation, the spread 203. So it's gonna give us numbers that will approximate like a bell-shaped curve, which is kind of what you would expect for the average price of like a deck, if all the decks are similar in nature, but not exactly the same if we're doing construction jobs. Where do I wanna put this? I wanna put this in the output. I wanna put it like right there, boom. And then I'm gonna say, okay, now I did 3000 might be a lot. So it might have to think a little bit. So you might wanna do something less than 3000. You can if, if you, if you uh, need to. Uh, if it overwhelms your system, but Excel should be able to crank this out. Okay, Excel has done it. Now notice that they kind of reformatted it to the general formatting. So I'm gonna right click on this and say, I'm gonna format the cells and reformat it to the way I want it. Currency, let's make negative numbers bracketed, no dollar sign, and let's just make, I'll keep it at two decimals so we can see a couple, so we can see the pennies here. And we'll say, okay, so there's our data. I'm also going to go to the home tab and bold it. So we have that. So there it is. So now let's go ahead and take the header. I'm going to go to font group and say, let's make that black, white, and center it. And then I'm going to take the, this data. Maybe I'll make this black and white control shift down. I'll make that black, white as well. Here's our data control shift down. I'll make this the red because I, again, we're imagining that we don't have all of the data. So I'm gonna say boom, red and white, but we, like we have it behind the scenes. We're like watching a movie and like we know, we know the story, but they don't know what the characters don't know like in universe, you know? You know what I mean? That's how we're doing it here. 
Okay, so let's actually, I'm going to put some control shift down, some borders in here too. Now, just to show you, I'm also going to insert a histogram. And so we're going to go charts and let's just put in a histogram of this data just to show you that it approximated a bell curve. That's what we, because we told it to give us random numbers that basically approximates a bell curve. So it looks like it did that, right? It's not a normal distribution. I mean, it's not a, a, a uniform distribution. We have that kind of bell shape uh, distribution. All right, let's put that down here. Get it out, get out of the way. I don't want you bothering my other stuff that I'm doing now. So, all right, so then let's go back up and say, now this was the data that was used to create it, but this data will not match this exactly, right? Because it was somewhat randomly generated. So let's make a skinny. I'm gonna take this one and go to the home tab and make a skinny eye, a skinny eye, and then mean pop. I need to make a skinny eye for crying. I could be skinnier. I'm gonna say this is gonna be equal to the mean of the pop. Whoop, what the hell? That's not, I want the average, equals the average. So now I'm gonna take the average of these numbers, control shift down, which is the mean, enter. And so it comes out to something close, but not exact to what we gave at the parameter. So this is the actual mean of the actual population data that we're imagining here. And the standard deviate STD of the population is gonna be equal to the STD of the, po of the P and control shift down, control backspace, enter. And so there we have it. And we could add some decimals, making it a little bit more exact. So again, that's what, so we're going to imagine that we, that we basically don't know this in essence, but we do know this. So I'll make, so, so we're imagining that we know that, which was given as a known component around uh, 202 uh, was this, which I should have put here, but around 202, that's what we have. So we're imagining, let's make that kind of orange. We know that about the population. All right. So now let's give, given that, let's take a sample. This is our population of 3000. We're going to take a sample of 300 and make our approximation. So this is again, like the story behind the scenes that we, as the narrator told ourselves, but in universe, we don't know, we don't know that stuff except the standard deviation. So stuff in red, we don't really know. So I'm going to make a skinny L over here. And then this is going to be uh, the sample fees, let's say fees, meaning the cost of these decks that we're making font, let's make this uh, black, white, let's center it. So now I need to take a sample of these numbers. One way we could do that to get a random generation is to basically like put a random number next to it, which would be equal rand in a table and then shuffle it, right? And then shuffle it so that, so that all the numbers would shuffle. Or we could just take like the first 300 because these numbers were all basically randomly generated when we generated them from the generator. But we're gonna imagine what we wanted. The other way we can do it is we can take an index and I can say, uh, pick 300 numbers randomly from here with an index function. So let's do that. Looks like this equals index tab. And then I'm going to pick this array, put in my cursor here, control shift down, control backspace. So we're going to, that's our index comma. And what do you want to do within there? I want you to pick random numbers, random between. And then when I say between, I don't mean between like the absolute numbers of one and 3000, but rather between columns one and 3000, pick the numbers within there. When I say column one, it doesn't a row one. I don't mean this row one. I mean this row one top of the table, comma down to 3000 rows because we made 3000 of them. 3000 is the last one. Control or close it up, close it up again, boom. All right. Oh, okay. Paso. Wait, it spilled it out that way. I made an, okay. I made an array. Let me fix it. I made a rand array. Sorry about that. I, I wanted to say rand between rand between not array for goodness gracious sakes. Rand between that's the one. Okay. Between one comma and 3000. Okay. 
Sorry about that. And then I'll say enter, closes it up, boom. All right, so there we have it. All right, so there's our sample and we're pulling that in. Now I wanna copy this down to 300 of them. So I'm gonna put my cursor here and say uh, F4 and then here F4, boom. And so then I can copy it down. Now I wanna have numbers so I can copy it down. So I'm gonna put my cursor on column M, right click and insert to have a column next to it. This is gonna be my count. I'll put, so numbers, let's just say, I'll put a one, two, this time I'm just gonna select the two of them, copy them down to 300. Put my cursor there, it's gonna have a, uh, a, a sequence and since there's only 300, I can copy it down rather than using a sequence formula, which we did when we wanted to copy it down to 3000 because 3000 would be more tedious to copy that down to. Let's make that black, white. Let's make this uh, black, white. And then this, I wanna copy it down to give me random numbers that were generated. Double click in the fill handle. It's gonna keep on shuffling. It keeps on shuffling the random numbers, but it should be picking random numbers from these 3,000, and then it keeps shuffling. Now, if we want them not to be shuffled, I can copy all of them and then paste them one, two, three. Right click and paste them one, two, three, but I'm gonna keep them shuffling and I'm okay with that. I'm, sorry, I'm trying to practice being okay with that. It bothers me at first, but then I'm like, dude, I can, I'm okay with that. We're gonna go to the home tab, font group, and then let's select the bucket drop down. I'm gonna make this blue. If you don't have that blue, by the way, it's in the more colors over here. It's in this color wheel. There's the blue. You don't have to use that blue. You can use another color, but I find it to be nice and calming. As we've discussed before, we need to relax. So we have that. All right, so then we can, now we can start imagining this is our sample that we have, and let's start pulling our data from that sample. So I'm gonna take this skinny L and say format painter, make a skinny O. And then I'm gonna say, all right, first, what's the N? Little N is the sample count. Sample count, sample size, right? I'm gonna double click here. And so I'm just gonna count them equals the count. I know there was 300 cause I just made them, but I'm gonna put my cursor here, control shift down, enter 300. All right, so then we want the X bar which is gonna be the, the average, in this case, average, average of sample. Now notice when we think about the average, no, no matter what we're doing, we're kind of tending towards that middle point. This is the average of the population. When I take the sample, hopefully it's tending towards that middle point. And if I was to imagine all of the of the of the different combinations of sample size 300 out of 3000 and I took the average of all of those samples and then took the average of the averages that would also tend towards that same number so all the averages however you're thinking of them are going to tend towards that middle number hopefully the average of the actual population so this is going to be the average of these numbers control shift down Control backspace, enter. Uh, so that's 805. So that's pretty close to this one, right? There's the actual middle point of the population. Now let's do the STD of the pop. Now this is known. I'm just going to pull this over. We're going to imagine this is not the standard deviation of the sample because we're imagining we know the actual standard deviation of the population, which was given at about 202. So that was given over here and we created our population with something 203 for, instead of 202 for some reason, but 202, that's, we're gonna say that we know that. Okay, and then we've got, and notice this is rounded. I didn't use an exact number here because it's actually, I pulled it from here. So yours might be a little different if you have a different standard deviation given the random sample or population that we made. And then we have the standard error, error of the mean. So now the standard error is basically, we're thinking kind of like the standard deviation of, instead of the population, instead of of the sample, as though we took every combination of the sample size of 300 
out of 3,000, which we are approximating with this formula. So remember, that's what, that's what this formula is basically doing. Because our population is fairly large, we can drop this half of it, and we know what the standard deviation of the population is. So it's just gonna be the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of n, n representing the count of the sample, which was 300. So this is gonna be equal to the, the uh, standard, the, equal to the, what did I just say? The standard deviation of the population here divided by square root SQRT, square root of the sample size, which was 300. And so I'm gonna say enter. So that's gonna be uh, around 12. If I add some decimals, it's like 11.649. All right, so then the confidence level, confidence, confidence level that was given. So we want it to be 95% confidence level. So 95%, that's what we're looking for, percentify to recognize. And then I'm gonna say, okay, what does that mean alpha is gonna be? So A equals alpha, which is the amounts at the ends. So we want the confidence is in the middle then the outer bits here, what is under there? Well, 100% is the total curve. So it's going to be 1 minus 95 and percentify to recognize. And so we've get, uh, uh, well, we don't have to percentify. Maybe I shouldn't, have, well, I'll keep it percentify. And then, uh, and then we've got, so that's going to be uh, the alpha 5%. And then uh, this is going to be the Z, the Z over two, or because now we're gonna take what's the what's one of these sides? These are symmetrical 5% we're imagining. And so we're gonna take then equals this divided by two. This should be A over two, A over two, something like that. So we're gonna say this is, let's percentify it this time. You might not always see that in a percent format, but there it is. Okay, so then, so now we have basically what we what we got as the middle point here. Now we wanna think about the, the interval or range, which is basically this bit, right? So that we get 95%, you know, in the middle is the idea. So, so let's say this is gonna be confidence interval, let's call it method one there's a couple ways to do this this is going to be norm dot inverse method so let's make this a header home tab font group i'm going to make it black and white and so this one we can say this is going to be then the lower uh limit of our of our range now of x's so the middle average price is eight seven eight twenty seven what's the lower range in terms of X's, remembering we can measure this in terms of our X's here and in terms of Z scores. And so right now we're looking what's the lower range in terms of X's so that we fit 95% in the orange area kind of of that curve. So we're gonna say this is gonna be equal to the norm. Instead of dot dist, we're gonna say dot inverse. And that's gonna give us then what we need is uh, the probability, so we want we're looking at this one because we're looking at the, the limit on one side, right? On the lower bit. So and then I'm gonna say comma, and then the mean, that's the middle point that we calculated at X bar, the 827, and then common, the standard deviation. We're not looking standard deviation of the population in this case, we're looking at the standard error uh, calculation. So if I say then enter, because we're making this thing around the bell curve which is being this would be us making a bell curve of the of the of the population this is our standard error calculation which we're typically using to make our bell curve even if we had a situation you will recall where the the actual data was not in the format of a bell curve but we imagine that we took all possible samples of sample size of whatever our sample size is, in this case, 300, and then took the, the average of all those and then the average of the averages, right? And that would tend towards the bell curve. So that gives us our 808. Now we want the upper bit. So this is gonna be the upper limit 
And so this is going to be equal. It's going to keep on shuffling, right? But now I'm going to say this is going to be equal to the norm uh, dot in norm dot dot inverse again. And this time, uh, this first bit, the probability, I'm looking at the other side. So I'm going to say one minus because the whole curve is 100% minus the probability. And we're going to say of the 2.5 and then comma, the mean is still going to be that middle point, which is the 839 and then comma, the standard deviation, we're picking up the standard error. That's what we want. Closing that up and enter. We can add a few more decimals on that boom boom so that's the interval that we're looking at it's going to keep on changing but that's the x that we have on each side around that middle point on the mean to have basically 95 percent of the curve in the middle which is about you know you would think like two standard deviations if using a normal curve which it wouldn't be possibly if we were using a t distribution which we might have to use and we'll see in future presentations if we didn't know the standard deviation of the population and possibly the population size is relatively small, for example. All right, so let's go ahead and make this bordered and uh, blue. Let's make this border blue too. Border blue, border blue. All right, so now let's, let's try another method to do the same thing. So confidence interval, just so we can see this from different angles. Method two. This is the norm.s.inverse method. Let's make this black and white. Selecting this, we're going to say this is going to be black and white. Boom. So now we're going to think about this first in terms of the Z's. Now, Z's are in measures of standard deviation. So Z for the upper uh, Z divided by 2. In other words, I'm looking at this now, but I'm thinking about it in terms of the Z scores and standard deviations to get 95% in the middle of a normal bell curve. You're talking two standard deviations up and below from the mean typically, right? That's going to be our idea. So we're going to say, all right, well, that means this is going to be equal to the norm dot S dot uh, inverse. And we're going to be want to be picking the probability and we're going to say this will be one minus then the uh, one minus the probability on the top end, which is going to be that that 2.5. So I'm using 100% minus that because I'm looking for that top bit. And that'll give us the two about if I add some decimals, we're looking at more like 1.96. Right now, if I didn't say one minus, what would it give us? It would give us the 1.96 on the low end, right? here versus here but i want to be at the top end that's why i'm going to go here and say this is going to be then one minus so that's the number of standard deviations then that i'd have to go from if i was at the middle point i would add it to get here and i would subtract it to get to get here right that's the idea all right so then th so now that we have that we can calculate our margin of error so, so, so we're going to say the margin of error then is going to be then uh, equal to the standard error of 11.6 times that's going to be equal to a standard deviation for our bell curve. And we have, to, I'm sorry, and we have to go times 1.96 standard deviations. So that's going to give us a margin of error of about 23 if I add some decimals it's uh, 22.83. So now I can say, all right, now we, I'm just going to recalculate the lower and upper limit given that. So in other words, now I can say, well, if the middle point is, is the average 835, now I can go to this margin of error down minus the 2283. And I should get to the same number if I add some decimals, 802.93. And I can say on the upper side, if I start at the middle point, 826 my, plus the standard error, adding some decimals, there, there we have the same number. So that's another way that we can calculate it. So I'm going to go home tab, font group, borders, and blue. Let's do another way to calculate it just to look at it from a different angle. Uh, this is going to be CI 
uh, we're going to say method three, and this will be confidence dot norm. Hopefully, I spelled that right. Confidence dot norm. So let's go to here and go home tab font, and I'm going to make this black and white. Okay, so now we're going to go right to this confidence uh, interval. Uh, so the mar I'm go we're going right to the margin of error, let's say. So we're going to say, I'm going to say, this is going to be the margin of error. This will be equal to, it's called the confidence dot norm. So we're going to pick that up. And then we're going to say the alpha. Now this time we want the entire thing, not the A divided by two, but the 5%. And then I'm going to say comma. This is also a little strange. It wants the standard deviation. This time we want the standard deviation of the population, which you were recall was known. And we used that to calculate the standard error. But this one, this time it wants that standard deviation of the population and then comma. Then we want the size, which we're talking about sample size or N. So there it is. And that brings us right to this number adding some decimals. So now we're here again. And the second bit is the same as the one we did before. Once we have that point, we can just say, all right, this is going to be equal to the middle point minus the margin of errors. And this is going to be equal to the middle point, the average plus the margin of errors, adding some decimals, numbers, add some decimals. So we get, hopefully I got the same result for those three methods. Let's go ahead and put some borders around this, border and blue. So basically the idea would be, therefore, therefore, we're gonna say we, we are 95%, we're gonna say percent sure that the population mean will be within this interval something like that and the interval is this and this which keeps changing we can add some decimals and so that would be kind of our conclude home tab let's make that blue and bordered all right so that's the general idea of it now now I'm going to go ahead and we'll graph this later so we can see it basically this way. As you can see, we graphed it over here so we can get an idea of it and you can visualize it, you know, in a similar fashion as we did with the hypothesis testing, except instead of using the population as the bell curve to see how far away the result is, we're basically using the result of the sample as the middle point and thinking of that interval as basically giving us some level of confidence around it, right? It's kind of the idea. So, and, and again, we can only do that if, you know, we have an idea of, of the SAMP, of the standard deviation of the population. So we'll take a look at T testing later where we don't have that and possibly the sample is small. Uh, next time we'll also continue with this and think about the idea that there could be 5% of the time just from random generation of these samples out of this 3000 that we don't that we don't fall within that interval right uh, and so and so let's test that so we'll next time we'll do the same thing but we'll do we'll do a bunch of of tests samples and we'll we'll get an idea of how many times we get one that that isn't correct right we get a we get a middle point that uh that is wrong right and it should happen you would think five percent of the time so we'll test and that'll hopefully give us a better sense of what we're talking about uh with these confidence intervals and kind of like their limitations and so on